Honorable Thank Benzuda. you so much, Madam Speaker. I would like all of us to adhere to silence so that we are heard. And I support on this the only thing I've ever supported, and I'm supporting on a statement that is positive from the majority leader, that we must keep quiet so that the Kenyans can listen to us, so that we debate objectively. On to the point. Kenya, in the first place, is a developing nation. <laughs> we are not yet developed. I'm hearing noise. <laughs> Honorable Bensuda, I know you're a teacher, but for no. now, be the member for Homer Bay. Yes, I'm given two minutes. I want to be very fast. Now, honorable members, we know that... Hold on with your point of order. We know that the country is a developing nation. And when we are developing, we must be progressive in any issue that we do. I also agree that we cannot run this country without making strategies on approach. And therefore... Honorable Speaker, after we have taxed nearly everything, there is no need of pretending of executing and implementing a 16% taxation. Honorable Speaker, I want to tell you that this government talked about creation of employment to our youths. It is a very clear statement that most of us do not have employment opportunities and the industry that must be supported one which has been proposed by the Kisi woman representative is the border border. And border border sector requires fuel. That is just one. Even the honorable members who are... We have had you, honorable member, member for Gidongori. Thank you, Madam Chair. I rise to give my seat, humble opinion on the issue of tax levy added on fuel, especially the VAT. Madam Speaker, we were in this house in 2018. No, it's okay. Those that are privileged to be here, you know from 2018 when we added tax on fuel, what happened to this economy. We are reaping from what we did. Madam Speaker, life is unbearable as we speak to our citizens of this republic. We cannot afford to add more levy on fuel because fuel is a catalyst of everything from production to marketing and to the welfare of the people. Madam Speaker, I want to be on record that right now our people are suffering and production, especially in our rural areas, is going to go to zero if we add tax on fuel. I therefore would want to say it very clearly here that if we want to revamp the economy of this country, adding tax on fuel is not the solution. The solution is empowering our farmers, our producers, who normally produce crops that bring dollars into this country. We bring more dollars by selling more of our produce so that we can be able to subsidize on the government expenditure. And on that point, Madam Chair, I stand to refuse the addition of fuel levy tax on the... Thank you. Thank you. Member for Igambangombe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I stand here today... Kagombe, Kagombe, this is the big ngombe. You are the small ngombe still. <laughs> you are out of order. Honorable oh, Patrick, you are out of order. Madam, you have two minutes maximum. Madam Speaker, I stand here, I stand here to support this, this amendment, this clause, Madam Speaker. Because Madam Speaker listening at the hypocrisy that is in this house today. Because, Madam Speaker, we debated the budget in this House, Madam Speaker, I didn't hear the other side of the divide reject even a single clause of the budget. They supported that we will have electricity, they supported that we will have water, they supported that we will do loans for this country, but when it comes to looking at ways of raising money for the same, Mr. Speaker, now, now we are opposed. Madam Speaker, I've heard our friends shout to the Speaker every day here that no CDF, no Parliament. Every day they come here to shout no CDF, no parliament. There is no gain without pain. If we want CDF, then we must pay for it. If we want loans, like in my constituency, Madam Speaker, 
I have a number of loans that are stolen today, Why Madam not? Speaker, that I wish to continue. So, Madam Speaker, I support and this is progressive. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable members, members, you will note we cannot all speak on this matter. But before I put the question, I will give Mbunge Wakilifi, then I will give Honorable Kalasinga, then I will give Honorable Bowen, and we will close. Member for Kilifi, Honorable Bombayu. Asante mwenyekiti wa mkao. Mi mwenyekiti nataka kuzungumzia kipengee hichi cha kuongezwa ushuru wa mafuta. Mi mwenyekiti tusidanganyane. Roma haikujengwa mara moja. Naona Kenya kwanza mwataka kujenga Roma kwa wakati mmoja. Hamwezi kuongeza ushuru wa mafuta asilimia mia moja kutoka asilimia nane paka asilimia kumi na sita ulisikia wapi nyinyi ndo mliosema Kenya haina pesa Kenya iko broke nyinyi mwenda kuongeza mafuta bei ya mafuta mara asilimia mia moja hawa mama mboga ambao wanaenda sokoni wataenda na mafuta ya gari gani waweze kujikimu hawa boda boda mlikuwa mnawazungumzia wataweza kufanya kazi zao vipi serikali msichuchezee hii mafuta ushuru ubaki asilimia nane au rudi tano na si asilimia kumi na sita tutawaramba na mtajua sisi ni kina nani hamuwezi kufanya wa Kenya namna hii sio mliowaambia wa Kenya mama mboga wanaenda sokoni kubeba mboga vipi na asilimia kumi na sita ya mafuta mheshimiwa mbeyu Mheshimiwa Mbeyu, jumba hili lina mdahalo na ni kuongea sio kutupiana maneno. Tujaribu sana kufuata kanuni zetu. Nampatia Mheshimiwa Kalasinga. Oh, thank you very much. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, this is the time now. This is the time now Kenyans have gone on televisions watching us. This is the time now, Madam Chair, that this house here, Honorable, must make a decision that serves Kenyans outside there. Yeah. Madam Chair, as I talk now, yeah. me as a person who comes from Western, yeah. we cannot grind and eat Ugali grade three without oil in our portion meals. Yeah. If we increase this, Madam Speaker, we shall paralyze our stomachs in Western province. Yeah. Madam Speaker, as I talk now, we have farmers in Rift Valley who uses tractors to plow their farms. If we increase the fuel, they are watching us now on television. I want to give a warning to this house now. I can even bleed and kneel down. But Kenyans must be given a freedom. And the freedom comes from here. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I want to... I want to support the amendment, Madam Chair. Madam, Madam Chair, and I want to say, Madam Chair, this clause, Madam Chair, I want to support the bill, Madam Chair. And Madam Chair, the, agreement, the, the reason as to why we have a fuel subsidy, Madam Chair, this is not the first time this uh, increment to 16% is before this house for the first time, Madam Chair. It's been there before. Madam Chair, this is the fuel subsidy. was used by the Anshek brothers when they were giving out a fuel subsidy and they misused. Madam, Ch Madam Chair, this government, the government paid over 50 billion in terms of fuel subsidy. But this is the time we are saying, Madam Chair, if we have to achieve all the development we need, which is in the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto, Madam Chair, we need to have the 16% and to stop the fuel subsidy which has been misused by the last Majority whip. So ma Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, I agree with several members that uh, it is indeed true that this is a very emotive topic. 
uh, especially when you talk about the increase of VAT on fuel. But again, to be fair, even as we bash the proposal to raise the 8% to 16%, we also need to be honest enough and inform the public that this thing was passed in the previous parliament and then deferred, and then deferred to this session. But be that as it may, Madam Chair, be that as it may, Chair, there is, it is important for also the House to know that the government has taken measures, several measures to mitigate the challenge of the increase of the 8%. The Order. escalating dollar has, Order. Been, has been mitigated Order. through the G2G. Order, you know, members. The issue of Mboka, you will not shout. zero what is in terms of, of the farm inputs have been reviewed. Order. Order. So there are so Order. many things that have been done. So Order. you can't Order. just be Order. It will be one person at, the, at a time. Please take your seats. Honorable Wamboka, what is out of order? <coughs> uh, Honorable Chair, we are the 13th Parliament and we are here to look at issues as they come to us as fresh as they are. Is the Honorable Member in order to mislead the House that we are looking at a bill of, uh, of, of the past uh, Parliament when they have just presented this bill that is retrogressive, that the bill that is going to hurt Manainji, that the bill that is going to hurt Bodabo. Honorable Amboka, that is a point of debate. Majority whip, finalize. Let me finalize by saying this. In, for, for clarity purposes, I'm talking about deferring. This issue was deferred from 2018 to this season. But be that as it may, Honorable Chair. Hold on, Honorable, Honorable Mbadi. Be that as it may, the government has taken other mitigation measures to curb the challenge of the escalating. The, I mean, there are so many things. You guys want us to operate on subsidy. You guys want us Other to operate members, on Other members, if you're on your feet, feet, I am not giving you. Member for nominated member, Badi, what is out of order? Madam, Madam Chair, we all know that this house is a house of records. And it is a house where we must be factual and truthful. When the ma majority whip misleads the whole country, and the whole country is watching, that the, that the last parliament passed VAT on petroleum products at 16% and it was deferred, that is not correct. The last parliament, if he has forgotten, rejected the 16%. We only allowed 8% after the President's memorandum. There is no deferment, and Madam Speaker, order. Madam Chair. Order, Member. Honorable Mbadi, you're debating. Honorable. Member for Finance Committee. Thank you, Honorable Chair. And I know this issue has been extremely emotive. But I would like not to dwell in the politics, but look at this proposal from a finance perspective as we did. We have three types of VAT in this country. A product is either zero rated, tax exempted, or vertable. So for the vertable supplies, whether goods or services, all of them are at 16%, apart from fuel, which is at 8%. So what does that do for that particular sector? There's something you call input VAT, and output VAT. So for all the players in this particular fuel sector, they pay input tax at 16%. But once they sell that fuel to the market, they sell it at 8%. So when they go to claim their VAT, they are always on a credit position. Let me finish. What therefore means, what means what it means to be on credit position, what it means, we heard you, give me a minute to finish my argument. What it means to be on a credit position is that it is taxpayers' money that has been paying the remaining 8%, and that is a fact. So this 8% that you have been subsidizing 
by 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 charging VAT on fuel at 8% on for all the other supplies 16%. It means it is taxpayers money that was paying this 8%. And this is what this proposal is curing. Members of the public told us, look at the other taxes that are comprises that are, that are composed this on fuel. And honorable chair we looked at them. Honorable members of parliament who are here will know that the Distributed equitably among all the 290 constituencies in this country to repair our Maram roads. That is a fact. So we looked at what are the other taxes in fuel that we can reduce. And honorable chair, we looked at import declaration fee, what you call IDF. We have reduced that from 3.5% to 2.5%. We looked at railway development levy, then we have reduced that from 2% to 1.5%. And those wind are up, facts. wind up, chair. Minority leader. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, let me add my voice to this debate. Uh, and clearly, if, if by any chance this clause becomes part of the bill and the VAT on fuel is increased 16%, this will be the saddest day in the history of this country. Madam Chair, Madam Chair if there is one thing that is going to affect the common person. If there is one thing that is going to increase the cost of living in all aspects, it is this proposed increment on the VAT on fuel, Madam, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, we all know for sure that fuel is a driver of our economy in, on all facets, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, if there is one thing that this government should have done to the so-called hustler, was to cushion the hustler from an increment in the cost of fuel. Madam, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, there is nowhere, there is nowhere in the law where we are where we are compelled to have a uniform rate of VAT on all products and services. VAT rates can vary, and they have varied before. Madam Chair, if there is a demonstration of the lack of interest in the welfare of the border border. If there's a demonstration of the lack of interest in the welfare of the Mamamboga, it is this decision or attempt by the Kenya Kwanza government to increase VAT on fuel, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I can, I can tell you, if by any chance, and God forbid, that this finance bill is passed and it becomes an act of parliament, that will mark the beginning of the fall of this regime. I can tell you. It will not take, it will not take more. Finally, leader of majority. Thank you, Honorable Speaker.